Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new series here at Nintendo Prime. Uh, it's a Q&A series, standalone video. I go through some questions before I get into those questions. I also just kind of give you guys like a state of Nintendo Prime address. We just go over things that are happening at Nintendo Prime, uh, the stuff that's going to affect the schedule for this week. Uh, the first thing I actually want to get into is the actual schedule. Um, I'm planning to have a schedule for videos that I'm going to be experimenting with this upcoming week. For those who don't know, for the entire year and a half of the of this channel existing, I have been just kind of winging it. Videos go up when they're done, when I feel like it, uh, or when I have time to make them. Instead, what I would like to do is take videos and have them come out on a more regular basis. So as an example, if I'm going to do Prime News, whether it's three days a week or five days a week this upcoming week, I want to have Prime News land at 3 p.m. Central every single day, Monday through Friday or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, depending on if I decide to go with a three day a week format or, a, or every day format. That's just a good target for me. It lets me know, okay, from the time I wake up until about 2 p.m., I need to have a Prime News done, rendered, finished, ready to go, and uploading by 2 so I can release it by 3. And the nice thing about that is it also gets it out before my kids get off the bus. So that actually works out really well for me on a timing basis because then once my kids get off the bus, it's time for me to worry about other things with my children. Um, beyond that, I also want to get out a video every day, uh, all 7 days of the week, in the morning. I'm not sure what time works yet for that. I've debated between maybe I should have it land at 6 or 7 so people can watch it before school. Maybe I shouldn't even worry about that and I should worry about spacing with the other video. You know, release it at like 10. You know, go like a 10 a.m., 3 p.m. And then maybe do like a late night video, um, you know, at 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. at night or something. But uh, that video in particular, I'm looking to make it a more discussion-oriented video. So that's where I take a topic, whether it was a news topic that we've talked about in the past that I want to expand upon. Maybe it's um, uh, something else entirely. Maybe it's just um, a, a question. I have a question for you guys, and I'm going to talk about my opinion on that question. I want to have those videos come out in the morning. So I'm going to play around with different timings for that. I am strongly thinking of about 10 a.m. because that also gives me time if I didn't get the video done the night before to do it in the morning. But uh, yeah, that's just what I'm thinking right now and I'm very curious uh, what time you think might work best for you guys. Um, beyond that, I do want to get a third video out at least Monday through Friday. That third video is something that I don't want to guarantee is going to land, but if it does come, I want it to land at a specific time. I don't know what timing I'm looking at. I don't know if I'm going to try to drop it at like 8 p.m. right before a live stream or if I'm going to drop it, you know, late night, you know, maybe 10 or 11 p.m. I haven't really decided, but that video is where I, I might do a standalone news video or uh, something, maybe something more original. Maybe that's where we drop the podcast. Actually, I can tell you right now, I plan to drop the podcast at uh, 10 a.m. on Monday mornings, but uh, if I don't have it in time yet, then it probably won't be dropping until the nighttime slot but either way i want i want you guys to know three specific times that you can expect videos to come out now for weekends things are a little different um we're still gonna i still want that morning discussion video but the other content we release on weekends is going to be more of the original variety not news related and stuff like that this series as an example would be one of those weekend videos releasing at a specific time slot that i hope to release videos at on weekends all the time uh, in addition, um, I, this is just one video type. Uh, we also hit our $200 goal on Patreon at patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. So that has enabled us to go back to making weekly op-ed editorials. And I feel like the weekend is a really good time to drop one of those. So I can at least guarantee I have this video and that video for the weekend. And if I could squeeze a second discussion video in, I could do that as well. Now, some people want to know things about the live stream. I don't really have a live stream schedule yet. It, it's hard. I've had a schedule of Monday, Wednesday, Friday with a bunch of random streams in between. And it's difficult because I have children that I have to put to bed and I can't stream until they're in bed. And then I end up streaming really late and I don't like streaming super late. So I have to debate what I want to do about that. I do know that uh, Sunday night, so this should be tomorrow night, I will be doing a This Week in Review stream. It went over very, very well when I did this a couple weeks back, uh, and where I basically look back at all of the big stories from the prior week, and I talk about them, I take your questions on them, and then we kind of you know move on to the next topic, the next topic, the next topic. Uh, it's usually about a two-hour stream, and then we're done. And I, I really like that. It's short and concise at two hours. 
um, and it enables me to just get through a whole bevy of news topics and discuss them with you uh, one-on-one. I think that's a very important thing to do. It's different than I do with pretty much any other piece of content I have because I don't really do stre- any other streams or anything else in particular to just specific news unless it's like a, a special Nintendo Direct stream or something like that. Um, now, you might be wondering, uh, another thing about streams is, is why haven't you been game streaming a lot lately? Um, unfortunately, my capture card died. Um, that sucks. It sucks that it died. Uh, I am, you know, if you guys would like to contribute towards buying a new one, I'm looking to get a proper one that actually does everything I want. And I can use like this camera here that you're watching this on for live streams, stuff like that. Uh, it's going to be, you know, like a $400 purchase. So, um, if you would like to help support buying that, that's fine. I'll, I'll have a donation link down in the description. No pressure. Um, I, at this point, I don't think I'll be able to pick it up until, you know, tax return season. So if that's the case, then that's the case. I'll get it during tax return season and we'll just call it good. But I am looking to get um, a specific capture card. I think the Elgato HD Pro, I believe, is the one I was looking at. Uh, and then uh, out of my own money, I'm going to be buying um, a stream deck as well to team with it. But it, it's not anything you guys have to worry about or support. But it does mean that there won't be any video game streams because I just don't have the ability to do video game streams until I get that sorted out. So I'm going to have to start to sort out some different unique things with my streams. I don't want each stream to be like the same thing, right? So uh, something I am looking at doing, and I experimented a bit with this uh, in our last live stream is making one of the streams I do a week uh, a quote-unquote workout stream. Um, and, and this is a stream where basically uh, I'm just chatting with you guys, and for every dollar that's donated or super chatted, I'll do sit-ups and push-ups and stuff like that. Um, it went over really well uh, for the brief period I experimented with it in the last stream. And honestly, it's a great way to motivate me to get me off my, off my well, you know, my fat arse and actually doing something positive for my health. Uh, in addition to that, um, I do want to do a cardio stream uh, once a week as well. Uh, that's not going to require donations and super chats. That's just me um, hitting the gym or hitting hitting an exercise bike or something um, for a, a half hour, and um, you know, having having you guys streaming off of my phone. It's going to be a very um, interesting looking stream compared to the rest because there won't be any any special effects. It's just you know streaming from my phone. But I do think that's going to um, help motivate me as well to keep going. The encouragement I hope I get through that. I'm sure I'll get tons of fat jokes as well. That's just the reality of dealing with the internet. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's really all I'm looking at when, when it comes to those streams. Now, I still want to have a live Q&A session, uh, the This Week in Review. Um, you know, I thought about maybe pushing This Week in Review to Friday nights since I usually do stream Friday nights, but we'll see. Um, I don't have any regular schedule for any of this yet, so just kind of pay attention to our Twitter and our community posts on, uh, on Nintendo Prime here on YouTube because that's where I'll be announcing uh, the schedule for that uh, when I decide what it's going to be. I, I plan to decide at least something for this upcoming week, um, and we'll go from there. Um, I also want to note that the last 30 days have been really stunning uh, at Nintendo Prime. Uh, we have gained almost 2,000 new subs over the last 30 days. So for starters, thank you guys so much. I hope you're enjoying the content. I know a lot of you joined because of our, obviously our Nintendo Switch, you know, bundle giveaway. But a lot of people are like, hey, we're really glad you're doing this giveaway because I've always wanted to subscribe to you and I just kept forgetting. It's not something we always, you know, when you're watching content on YouTube, you don't always think about subscribing, even though in videos they mention to subscribe. You hear it so often, it just kind of drowns you out. So having that giveaway really reminded some people, hey, I'm not, I'm not subscribed to him yet. Why am I not subscribed to Nate at Nintendo Prime? So uh, 2,000 new subscribers over the past 30 days is just awesome. Um, by the time we do another one of these videos, which should be a week from now, we might even hit 40K overall at the channel, which is just an amazing accomplishment and actually puts us a little bit ahead of last year's pace if we do that here in the month of November. So that that's just exciting to me. It shows we're on a positive growth path that what I'm doing here is working, and I hope it continues to work. Um, because I, I love doing this and I want to keep doing it longer and longer and longer. And I'm sure by now some of you notice this long cord. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm an idiot. I didn't, I actually have a longer cable and I didn't swap it out beforehand. So this cable is like clotheslining my kids. <laughs> um, let me see. Uh, I'll just glance at my notes here if there's anything else I wanted to go over. Um, health update. So for those who don't know, uh, I tore my meniscus, uh, about 
two nights ago, three nights ago now. Um, in my right knee, it's doing okay. Uh, it is feeling a little bit better today, just a little bit better today than it's felt uh, the past few days. So what that does mean is I probably will not need surgery on it, which is, that's what we all want to avoid. We don't want to have to have surgery. So it's still going to be a two-month recovery process. Um, it's going to get to a point where it's going to feel like it's 100% here in like a week or two, but it's really not. And I need to be conscientious of the fact that it's not 100% so I don't overdo it. You know, start lifting things, start running and jogging when I shouldn't be. Uh, stuff like that. So um, even when I'm doing cardio, I got to be really careful about it. There's certain motions I'm not supposed to be doing. So, and you guys have probably seen in some of the live streams, I have this big bulky leg brace on um, that uh, I have to be on anytime I'm going to be walking. I can walk without it, but it's more so for my protection. So I don't try to bend my knee while I walk, which you know, when you walk, you, you do bend your knees a little bit. And that, that could actually lead to me tearing my meniscus even further with the, the pressure applied from my weight. And then, you know, you know, trying to take a normal step versus keeping your leg stiff. So it's mostly there to remind me, hey, your leg needs to stay stiff when you walk. Uh, and I'm pretty good about remembering to do that. But then you get the stairs and it's just all no stairs are not good. <laughs> Uh, beyond that, some upcoming content that I, I just want to briefly mention. I'm looking at um, some discussion topics. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about uh, my expectations and wants and desires for Animal Crossing. I want to do the same for the next Zelda game. I want to do the same for the next Mario game. I also want to talk about some of the games coming next year. Bayonetta 3, Metroid Prime 4, although I don't know if Metroid Prime 4 is actually coming next year. But some things I would like to see from those. And I kind of, and, and those are kind of those discussion videos I was talking about dropping in the morning. Where it's just me having a conversation with you guys and getting your guys' thoughts. A little back and forth action on just debating on this stuff. Um, and, and having some fun with it. Uh, the last couple things I want to address are just some comments that have come up uh, throughout the week. Uh, one of them uh, is is weird. I've seen this come up a few times uh, over the past month, really, is am I a corporate shill because I'm pushing for things like game streaming on Switch? I always think it's interesting when people do that because I'm I'm someone that I have a unique... It has to be a unique viewpoint at this point because I say a lot of controversial things, apparently, that I don't think are so controversial. But uh, apparently game streaming and my desires for it is controversial because you know of all the benefits that... That, that these companies get and you don't own the games and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, I don't own anything on Netflix and I don't find myself giving a crap about it. So the thing is, if I subscribe for, say, $15 a month to a game streaming service that's giving me thousands of new games, adding dozens and dozens of new games a month, including the AAA variety and some new original titles and blah, 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 blah. And yeah, even if some cycle out after, you know, a year, am I really going to care that much? I have so much content to play. It's, it, it's, it's actually extremely pro-consumer. Yes, you should still have the ability to buy and own those games. And I don't think physical games and stuff are going anywhere, uh, even if some certain games won't release on Switch any other way but game streaming. But I, I view it as a mostly pro-consumer move. It's not really a, a pro-corporate move because corporate, um, they would prefer to just keep selling millions and millions and millions of digital copies of games because that's where they make massive bank. They don't want $15 a month when you can get a user to spend $300 a month on digital games. They would rather have your 300 than your 15, but that's why it's going to be interesting when we do get a Netflix for game streaming. That's when you're going to start to see game streaming taken extremely seriously. And who's going to be the first company to successfully pull that off? Beats me. But uh, I know Microsoft's pushing hard for it. Google's pushing hard for it. PlayStation has it with their classic games. Nintendo has it from, from certain third-party publishers and Capcom and Ubisoft. So it's going to be interesting to see where game streaming goes in the future. But I, yeah, I'm not a corporate shill. I don't really. As much as I want Nintendo to do well and companies that make games I like to do well, I want them to do well in so much that they can keep making games I like. I don't really care if they make billions and billions and billions and make all of the money. I've actually spoken out against some of the monetization methods that exist. So, I don't know. I just thought it was really interesting to see me being framed as a corporate shill because you disagree and you're vehemently opposed to something I like. Um, it's okay to be opposed to it. Uh, also, another comment that I just want to kind of address before we get to our, our questions um, is uh, uh, some statements some people said that I only have my controversial views. The most controversial recently, probably my view on the Piranha Plant DLC, um, <laughs> that, that I only have those views to drive viewership, right? That I'm, I'm not actually, I don't actually feel this way. Um, and even if I did, I'm only saying something so I can get a lot of views. And the thing is, those videos, when I say those controversial opinions, don't actually get that many views. 
uh, just to be completely honest. The videos that get the most amount of views for me are either um, when something really bad, like factually has happened, uh, like Ben Gate, you know, last year with the Switch, or when something very, very good is happening. Like when a massive AAA game we never expected to be on Switch gets announced for Switch. Uh, those are the things that tend to perform really, really well. And then stuff like this, community things, original content. Original content actually performs very well on, on my channel and is something that I want to strive to make more of. Uh, so no, I don't have controversial opinions to drive views. It doesn't actually work, even if, I, even if that was the case. I feel like... So some people try to make me feel like I have this obligation to represent um, a large audience of people, right? That like my opinions matter more than others because I have a platform and a following and um, can get people to watch my content. Ergo, I should be more responsible, I guess, with the opinions I have. And I'm going to always be at me dis like disagree with that. I'm going to have the opinions and the thought processes I have. You don't have to agree. It's okay if you think differently. It's okay if the Piranha Plant stuff doesn't bother you, even if it bothers me. It's not that big of a deal. In the grand scheme of gaming, I'm still picking up Smash Bros. You're still picking up Smash Bros. It doesn't really ultimately matter, but it is something that I like to point out because it is something that bothers me. And if it's bothering me and it's just sitting there you know, at the tip of my tongue and you know, at the forefront of my mind, I got to get it off my chest to make a video about it. Uh, and then I can kind of move on. Unfortunately, after you make the video, other people don't like to move on because they don't like to let it go because they just think I'm such an idiot for having these stances. So I'm not going to change the way that I approach um, the creation of that kind of content because that's who I am. And it's okay. I don't feel like I represent you. I'm not a representative for you. I'm not a politician. I'm a YouTuber making the content I want to make hoping that enough people care to watch it that I can keep doing it. That's that's really it. That's that's what this channel is. It's me passionately making content I care about, getting my viewpoint and my stances out there, whether or not you agree or disagree. So um, definitely not controversy to drive views. Um, I know I, If I just cared about clickbait and views, I know, well, I have like 20 years of experience. I know well how to do that, but that's not what I care about at my channel. I care about the content I'm making and the message I'm sending. All right, that being said, uh, that's, that's going to end kind of the uh, discussion about Nintendo Prime and all that stuff. Let's get into your guys' questions. First off, we're going to start with some, uh, a few questions we had off of Twitter. The first one comes from at SaySTUFF, and he says, If you had one video game-related wish, anything goes, what would it be? No genie shenanigans, no limits. <sighs> that every game made ever would be on every video game platform that is considered current generation so switch xbox playstation pc even our mobile phones that all AAA games all indie games all nintendo games all sony games all microsoft games are just playable on anything and at that point it's it's not about bragging rights over who has the best exclusives and more so uh, how do you want a game? Where do you want a game? What's the most convenient way for you to game? What platform do you prefer to game on? And then you could just play everything because that way there's no limits anymore. Us, us, like myself as a Switch owner, I have no limits. Like when I'm buying Switch, I don't have to sacrifice having certain games. When I'm buying Sony, I don't have to sacrifice Nintendo games and stuff like that. Like having that, that this platform agnostic dream that's never going to be reality it's never going to exist and i'm sure that I just talked about controversial opinions this is probably a controversial opinion but uh you you did say you know anything video game related you know one video game related wish anything goes what would it be that's it i want platform agnostic um for all of gaming unfortunately that's never going to be the case we know it's never going to be the case uh, it's not even true in any other medium. You know, there, there's things that are on Netflix that aren't on Hulu that aren't on Amazon Prime. Like, that's just how it goes. Exclusives are, are how you how you sell this medium. But yeah, I just I wish that it was different because it would also get rid of console wars a little bit. People would still argue over what's more powerful and blah blah blah. Like, Xbox One X is the best performer. Like, people would still argue about all that. But ultimately, what matters is the games. And the more people that get to play these games, the better. Like having Spider-Man on Switch or having, um, you know, Uncharted over on Xbox or Halo over on PlayStation. Like that would just all be amazing. And it would expand the user base for these games greatly. But um, that's just not the reality we live in. And uh, I'm sure you guys love your console exclusives. A lot of people love their console exclusives. That's, that usually is the big reason you pick a PlayStation, Xbox, or you know, Nintendo platform is because you're you're looking at exclusives or PC gaming. But um, I like I, I like the idea of everything just being multi-platform and not having restrictions. But 
it's never going to happen. <laughs> Don't worry. No genie shenanigans. Uh, the next question we have comes from at uh, ADV Media Net over on Twitter. And he says, why did you decide to transition from print journalism into YouTube videos? Uh, which do you like more? So, for those who don't know, I was doing print journalism for, gosh, 20 years. Um, I mean, I really started when I was 12, but probably not in a more serious capacity, you know, making money from it, doing it, you know, partially for a living uh, until I was like 22, 23. Uh, and then I did that up until, you know, well, I I've been doing that for like a decade. Uh, I transitioned out of it um, after I left Zelda Informer or after I was let go at Zelda Informer. Uh, I transitioned out of it so... Um, <laughs> see, I could still do it. And I still do it. NintendoPrime.net, I'm still adding news here and there. So I'm still doing some traditional journalism. But it's easy for me, right? I like a challenge. I I'm someone who's always liked to challenge myself. Print journalism is not a challenge for me. Uh, some of the bigger stories where you have to get a bunch of contacts in the industry and get a hold of depth, uh, it's like that's a challenge. But in general, reporting on news and, and writing editorials, it wasn't really challenging me anymore. It became so, I, I got so good at it, it was like second nature. Um, and then last year, as I was actually doing traditional stuff while making a, a few YouTube videos here and there, I started realizing that I actually enjoyed YouTube videos more. One, because I don't know a lot about this space. I might seem like I know what I'm doing, but I don't. Like I have a mixer and, and like this mics and these cables running over i have no i didn't even know i knew what a, i knew what a mixer was but i didn't know how to use a mixer until you know late last year and even then i still don't know what 90 percent of the knobs on that thing do so i keep them off um this camera uh i don't know everything about this camera and how to do there's a lot of things about it i could be doing better i could probably get the exposure better you gotta like, change out the lenses and get better like i just don't know enough but i like the challenge of learning to improve at this stuff video editing i'm not that great of a video editor like hands down i'm just not i hope my content is good enough and that my editing is um just slowly improving over time and i, I already know my editing has improved massively over what i was doing last year but it's it's a challenge and I like challenges I like I like making content that I enjoy that's also challenging to do and makes me learn new things now there could be a point where I'm not learning any new things anymore making YouTube videos but I can tell you right now I am having more fun making YouTube videos than I have had writing articles and news um, about Zelda about Nintendo about anything over like the past 10 years this is more fun to me than at any point during those 10 years. Part of it's because I'm doing it for myself, right? I, I answer to myself. I'm my own boss. I don't have other employees I'm necessarily relying on consistently. Yeah, Eric for the podcast. And if he doesn't show up, I just go grab some other people. Um, I don't really have uh, anyone to worry about but me and my family. So it, it's been a great experience for me uh, to do this YouTube thing. Um, it's a little hard leaving the, the print aspect behind, um, but... And I also have to talk a little bit about the money side of things. All the money's in video. It's not really in um, print journalism anymore. To, to, to make money off of NintendoPrime.net, you know, I have to be getting almost a million views a month. Whereas to make, and that's just to make like 500 bucks, right? Oh, $500 off a million views. If I had a million views a month on YouTube, oh boy, I'm making thousands a month, not, not 500 so there's that as well. It's just the better, you know, monetary move if I want to do something like this for a career. And it's amazing I lasted as long as I did doing the Zelda Informer stuff. Guys, this doesn't mean I didn't ever have other jobs, guys. Obviously, I didn't always make enough money as Zelda Informer uh, to do it full time. There were sections of my life I did it for full time. But um, yeah, I, I was obviously I had other jobs. I still have other jobs. So um, yeah, but I, I mean, that's the dream, you know, is to be able to do this full time. Uh, without needing other jobs because the revenue is, is doing well enough. Um, thank you for your question. Uh, next up we have uh, at Spamo Man. Actually, the next two questions come from him. Uh, the first one says Avengers versus Smash Bros. Who wins and why is it Smash Bros.? <laughs> for me, Avengers win. But this blasts me to say this on a Nintendo channel. But Avengers win? What are you talking about? I'm a casual Smash fan, but I'm really into Marvel. So for me, uh, the Marvel movies and the Avengers are a way bigger deal to me than Smash Bros. I know. I know, sue me. We don't get Smash Bros. as often. Should be a massive deal. Really excited for Ultimate, but I'm, I can't help it, man. I'm a Marvel guy. Sorry, DC. I mean, I like some DC characters, but... Ah, oh, man. <laughs> and those 2,000 subs I just gained went away. 
Uh, then, uh, then Spamway wanted to ask, do you think Three Houses, he's referring to Fire Emblem Three Houses, uh, will live up to the bar set by the previous Fire Emblem games? The last few entries have been unbelievably good, and returning to home consoles for the first time since Radiant Dawn is a pretty daunting task. Um, I think it's going to be good. One, they've taken their time with it. Uh, after the success, or the rapid-fire success, I guess, of Awakening on 3DS, uh, there was a small little break because I think they were surprised at how well Awakening did. And then all of a sudden, you know, we got Echoes and Fates and, and those kind of came really close together. And I know one's kind of like a remake of an older one. But still, uh, we got those kind of rapid fire close together. And yeah, they're really high quality games. They're really good. I don't like some of the DLC practices, in particular with Echoes. I don't know what the hell they were doing with Echoes. Um, some paywall stuff in there that I disagree with a lot. But besides that, I really I really enjoyed the, the Fire Emblem games. Uh, I didn't play a lot of Fates. I'm going to be right up front. I played a lot of Echoes, played a lot of Awakening, played a lot of Radiant Dawn back on GameCube. Um, but I didn't really play uh, much of the mo the latest edition because it, it almost felt like more of the same, right? I was ready for a return to home consoles. And so I'm really excited for Three Houses. Um, will it live up to the bar? I hope it exceeds it. I hope it sees the bar like awake, like Awakening kind of set the bar, and then Echoes and Fates just kind of came up to the bar, right? They didn't really exceed it. They just matched it. Well, I want to see three houses. Like, here's the bar by Awakening. I want to see three houses up here. And I think it's possible. I, I don't know if they'll do it with this game because it's their first return to consoles. Uh, you know, I would love to see a Breath of the Wild, you know, up the Fire Emblem games. But, uh... I mean, technically, if you want to come Fire Emblem Warriors, I guess we've had a Fire Emblem game on, on Switch already. But, yeah, I, I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's going to do really, really well. Um, I hope it continues to do really, really well. I hope uh, I, they need to reveal more of it because at, the, at, the, at this time, we, we only know, like, the bare essentials for it. Hey, it's a Fire Emblem game. Hey, it looks like a Fire Emblem game. Hey, it's pretty. Hey, it's got a story. It's like, okay, well, let's, let's get into some more depth. Uh, and that's what I always like about Fire Emblem games is... The, str the strategy in the battles, and then obviously the story. Um, I've always been loved that about Fire Emblem. So, um, I mean, with Fire Emblem Heroes going off on phones, uh, the 3DS game's going well, I, I don't see any reason we shouldn't expect an excellent Fire Emblem game on Switch, even if the name sounds weird. Then again, I've always thought Fire Emblem names sound weird, like Radiant Dawn. Okay. <laughs> Awakening. All right, I guess. <laughs> Fates. Echoes. I mean, I guess they're going away from the, the the one word two, three houses. Instead of just calling it houses, they're calling it three. I don't know. Um, let me see here. Uh, next question we have on Twitter, or the last question on Twitter we have, comes from uh, Corey underscore Bohm, and he says, "Top three things you would like to see with a Switch revision." Ooh, top three things. I mean, more powerful hardware, whatever that means. However they do it. Um, a 1080p screen probably won't get it. Um, and oh man, top three. I, I'm debating between like a better design kickstand or um, better rails for the Joy Cons so they don't get so loose. Now, I don't actually have the loose Joy Con problem, but I've seen enough people complain about it that I think um, better designed rails uh, to prevent that would be would be advantageous of Nintendo to do. So uh, those are kind of my top three desires for a Switch revision. I know, not very original, but uh, can't help it, I guess. I, I, I like what I have in Switch. Um, unless, we were, unless we're counting OS-level things, like better online service, better this, better that. But um, they don't need a revision to improve that stuff. So, uh, All right, the next questions here uh, come from Patreon. We got a little group of questions from Edward Norton on patreon he says uh what's your favorite dc or marvel comic book superheroes that are in tv shows it's interesting that he references tv shows now i don't watch a lot of cartoon and anime tv shows so a lot of the animated stuff i i can't really comment on it's just not really been my thing so if we're talking about tv shows pretty much the whole arrow flash superwoman uh, this isn't another one in there uh, anyways, all those kind of all those kind of shows are kind of like my my favorites I've seen, and those are mostly those is a DC universe. Um, I did like uh, Agents of Shield, but uh, not nearly as much as Flash and Arrow and all that stuff. So um, that's kind of where I'm going to stick my flag and be like, yeah, that's what I'm into. Um, so there you go on that. Uh, he then says, um, "What are your tips to win an Age of Empires match versus NPC or real player?" 
Uh, biggest tips is getting to know the ins and outs of your faction. Whatever faction you're playing with. I mean, knowing the ins and outs of all the factions is ideal. But knowing what, uh, what advances and what technologies you want to learn first in order to build the units you want to build or increase the food production you want to do or whatever is very key. So basically getting to know the ins and outs of the factions. Um, hotkeys. Uh, when you're playing on PC, you got to hotkey the hell out of it because uh, you need to rapid build a lot. Um, and uh, making sure that early in the game, you really emphasize getting a good economy going. So a good, a good, a good, you know, food influx for one is huge at first because that's how you build more peasants. Um, and then making sure your your wood, stone, gold, and uh, you know, trying to um, build your military around a very strong economy uh, is is the best way to go about it. Walls are basically useless. Um, and, and against players, and I mean, they're a little bit better against NPCs because NPCs will just walk around them. Uh, but walls don't really serve too big of a purpose. There are moments in gameplay where building walls is advantageous, even against real players. But those moments are not really worth focusing on. Um, that's a, that's a skill set you could pick up later. Uh, so yeah, hotkeys, getting to know the ins and outs of of the factions, building a strong economy early, um, are really the big key factors. Also, um, scoping the map out. Whether now, if Fog of War is off, it's easier to scope the map. If Fog of War is on, making sure you send send your scout out because you always start with one scout. Uh, basically, what you're trying to look for is one, the position of the enemies. Um, so you know where everyone's kind of building their base and then two where the next you know two to three gold and and Stone piles are because those gold and stone piles are going to be massive as you age up in the game Because uh, things are you know castles and, and units are going to become really really expensive late in game um, Let's see here uh, What would you name your workout segment in live streams if I do it? You know, I don't know. I think the one at uh, when I go to the gym and do some cardio, uh, and I'm just streaming from my phone, it would probably be something pretty simple, like, um, you know, you know, a cardio stream, you know, work uh, or cardio workout, you know, stream one, stream two, stream three, and just keep going from there. Uh, so I actually could know how many times have I been actually doing cardio this month or this year. Um, and then the ones that the ones at home where I'm doing like the push-ups and the sit-ups for donations and stuff, uh, that would probably be. I, I, I don't know what I would call it. Probably just something like, um, um, come come uh, come help motivate me uh, to work out or something like that. Uh, and then I would just call it like stream one, stream two, stream three. So I can keep track of that as well. Um, and I know again, it does sound kind of weird saying pay me money to do it, but it you guys don't know how it's so hard to motivate myself. Um, and yeah, money's a good motivator. It just is. Um, and when I'm doing cardio, you know, your guys' support, just not even like super chats and donations when I'm doing that, just like encouraging me, being like, we're so proud to see you, you know, working out and drinking water and, and trying to improve the health so you don't tear another meniscus and stuff like that. Um, it, it is something that is very, very encouraging because the sit-ups and the push-ups aren't going to necessarily help as much that the cardio is really going to help with the weight loss. The sit-ups and the push-ups are going to help build my core back up, which I need to do anyways. After my hernia surgery, I need to rebuild my core around my hernia scar. And then I need to, um, you know, just build some strength back up in general for other things in my life. Uh, if I can get back to a time in my life where I can do monkey bars again, like I can't do monkey bars at all. I mean, forget chin-ups. I'm just talking about doing monkey bars. That, that's like a goal I want to hit is being able to do monkey bars again um, would be awesome and then I got to weigh a lot less and be a lot stronger than I am now to do that um, let's see here uh, do I have one funny <laughs> drinking story that involves my friends there's a, there's a lot of them uh, probably the one most relevant to this channel is, uh, is a, a lot of parties we used to have uh, that me and my friend Jason used to have at the house we lived in because we lived together uh, we do house parties about once every two weeks and uh, we would have uh, smash the drinking game um, and Jason was really good at smash I I've never been like really I th always thought I was good at smash but I I'm really not that good at smash so he's really good at it and he would beat most people but but we would always make like these rules uh, once he started dominating we're like fine you know what every time you you kill someone you have to take a shot um, every not not a drink a shot um, Every time someone kills you, you know, you have to take two shots. <laughs> um, so it was kind of fun getting him uh, really, really plastered and then finally beating him. Uh, so, yes, I do have a victory against him, but uh, it took me getting him pretty pretty far gone for that to happen. And he wasn't too happy about it. 
he was fine the next day, but he, he just wasn't too happy that he lost. Um, you know how it gets. You Even when you're not that good at Smash, you always get super ultra competitive when you're playing it. I don't know why. I don't know what it is about Smash Bros. that brings that out in me. But, yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, next up we have... Um, what was your dream back when I was a kid? To be a player in the NBA. I really wanted to make it in the NBA. Didn't even get to start for my high school varsity team. So I'll let you know how far that dream came. <laughs> just a little too short. A little, it doesn't matter how, how good I could shoot. I was just too short. I'm 5'5". Five five. I'd be probably destroyed in the NBA. I mean, even Allen Iverson was bigger than me when he was, you know, becoming a thing. So, um, The uh, next question from our patron comes from Yoshi. Hi, Yoshi. Uh, he says, uh, what sports or activities did I do as a kid? Uh, growing up, I played uh, t-ball, then baseball. Um, that was a big one when I was younger. Uh, that, and I also did, uh, you know, PB football, you know, United States football. And then uh, I continued to play football until my junior year in high school. I started playing basketball around age eight, nine, something like that. Uh, and I played that all the way until my junior year of high school as well. Uh, I, I started playing golf. Um, and I was doing golf. Uh, I did track for a while. I did track up until high school. And then I decided I just don't like running that much anymore. Which is funny because after I, I quit football because uh, the new head coach basically told me I wouldn't even play a kickoff team even though I lettered and led the team in sacks on varsity my sophomore year. So like being told at the beginning of the next year that I'm not good enough really felt weird. So I uh, quit football and I joined soccer. So as I said, ironically about not wanting to run, um, I ended up playing a sport that involved a lot of running. I ended up being a goalie, and I was actually a pretty damn good goalie. I almost took a – well, not my team. We almost got to state while I, when I was goalie, so it was it was pretty fun. A nice transition because I was really good with my hands. I was really good at catching, catching balls and stuff, so it was really easy for me. Even though I'm short, like, I could jump really high, and it was just an, it was a nice uh, transition for me to play goalie. Uh, but I still did all the jogging and all the running. Everyone else didn't practice. So, oh, no, yeah, we did, like, eight miles today. I did those eight miles, and it sucked, but I did it. Um – more than that, um, just kind of looking around at um, all the sports. You know, by the time I, I got, uh, by the time like my senior year in high school, I was doing uh, soccer, golf. Um, wasn't doing basketball anymore. I replaced basketball with uh, school musicals. So I was doing school musicals at that time. Not really a sport. Uh, and then I was, I, I'd always practice with the track team in the spring, but I wouldn't actually be part of the track team because I didn't want to do meets. So that was kind of what I did. Uh, I always talk about being a four-sport athlete. I, I stopped doing baseball. I did travel team baseball up until I was 17. I never played for my high school, uh, which was like the year before I graduated. So I guess junior year, through the junior year. Um, but I continued to play basketball even after I was no longer on the team. I would go uh, to the YMCA three days a week and do pickup ball uh, with adults. Um, and, and that was a lot of fun. So, yeah, I, I, I just love sports. <laughs> I love sports. It, it's sad that my favorite sports, like basketball and football, that somehow I wasn't good enough to actually get playing time, despite stats saying otherwise. So, yeah, I guess that's that's really all I, I have about that. Um, uh, and then he says, uh, what was your first Nintendo console and the first game you got with it? Uh, and has that game built you into the gamer you are today? So the first Nintendo console I owned was a Game Boy that I got as a present from my parents. Uh, the first Nintendo console I actually played and used regularly was the NES, and it was my dad's. Uh, the first game I played on it was Punch-Out, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Um, and I, I still love Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. I still love Punch-Out in general to this day. Um, so that kind of shaped my gaming because I, it went from Punch-Out to things like Dodgeball to uh, Tecmo Super Bowl. Uh, to in a couple sports games, and then to Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt, Hogan's Alley, um, you know, Balloon, Balloon Fight, uh, Battletoads, it's like just everything back in the NES era. Um, I just kind of started going nuts, and so it all and it all started with Mike Tyson's Punch Out. So uh, great game. It started with me upsetting my dad because he was on Mike Tyson and he was going to the bathroom, and so I started playing for him, and I got destroyed, and. If you know anything about that game, there's not like passwords and cheat codes to get back to Mike Tyson. So I wasted all of his lives and he had to start over again. He was not happy because it took him like all day to get to Mike Tyson. So and he had never beaten Mike Tyson. So I was, uh, I didn't get grounded, but, uh, I wasn't allowed to touch the NES again for a, for a little while. 
track and field too. Oh, I, re I remember I had birthday parties where track and field was like a game we made, and we did competitions like who could get first in, in the hurdles and stuff like that. Uh, would would get prizes and stuff. That was really fun. Um, all right, then the next set of uh, questions comes from uh, YouTube. Um, let's see here. First one comes from Fire Falcon X, and he says, uh, "What was the biggest tragedy you ever had?" What was your first impressions on the Switch, and did you ever own a Wii U, and how's life? Uh, biggest tragedy, tragedy I ever had is what happened last week my, when my grandfather passed away. Uh, I haven't had anything remotely close to or comparable to that ever in my life. Um, what was the first uh, your first impressions of the Switch? Highly impressed. Highly impressed. You can go back and watch some early videos of the Switch. I was excited for it coming into launch. My first impressions when they shorted off in October was, holy crap, Nintendo did it. <laughs> that, that was my first impressions. Um, did I ever own a Wii U? Sure did. The entire generation. Um, played all the exclusives. I think I played literally every single exclusive ever released on Wii U. Uh, and how's life? Um, I mean, I tore my meniscus. My grandfather died. My other grandfather had a stroke. Um, so I guess all things considered, uh, based on that over the past two weeks, life is okay. It's, it's okay, and it's slowly getting better. Um, the next question comes from Joel. Salamba. He says, what's your favorite console and game on that console of all time? My favorite console is still the Super Nintendo. Um, Switch has a chance to get there, but we're too early in the life cycle for me. I have to reflect on Switch once we're in the next generation. Um, so right now it's Super Nintendo, and my favorite game on there is Secret of Mana. Um, let's see here. And the next question comes from Scrub Kid, and he says, how many houses can a warehouse wear if a warehouse could wear houses? Three. Whenever you don't know the answer, the answer is three. Uh, Lucas uh, Bradlewater says, uh, "What do you personally think of the Pikmin series, and when do you think Pikmin Four is going to release?" I think the Pikmin series is, is a very interesting strategy game um, that's just different than everything else on the market. Uh, it's got this appeal where kids like it, adults like it. Um, I, I've noticed a lot that female gamers, um, or uh, I guess. Gamers of the opposite sex of me uh, seem to be really interested in Pikmin. Um, I enjoyed it. My, my fiance loves Pikmin 3. I was her first experience of Pikmin, and she played it all the way through. I wasn't even home. I didn't even tell her to play it. She just picked it up. She was bored. She's like, oh, my God, this is awesome. Uh, so, yeah, I'm really, really into Pikmin. Um, it, it's not like, you know, one of my top 10 franchises out there, but I, I pick it up every time, and I love it to death. Uh, as for when do I think Pikmin 4 is going to release, um... I mean, according to Miyamoto, Pikmin 4 is done. So, I'm surprised it didn't come out this year, honestly. They could have used it this year. So, I don't know. I don't know. i honestly not sure what would make them want to bring it back if this year wasn't a good enough reason to bring it back. So, at this point, maybe 2020, since we don't know uh, what's coming yet in 2020. Um... The next question comes from Kelsey uh, Desa, and it says, Who is most likely going to sell the most consoles this holiday season? I have a hunch it could be definitely be Nintendo. Well, Nintendo with Pokemon and Smash is kind of a nice one-two punch. Um, but it's still going to be the most expensive system out there besides like the Xbox One X and the PlayStation 4 Pro. Um, the Xbox One X is already being discounted down to like 400 You'll probably see a couple flash sales for 300 uh, and you're going to see OG Xbox down at 150 You're going to see PlayStation 4 down at 200 or under with games bundled in. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. Uh, PlayStation 4, I think, is clearly um, in position right now. Uh, you know, not just thanks to like Red Dead Redemption that's on everything, but also thanks to Spider-Man and God of War. It's in good position to actually sell really well this holiday, uh, as it's been in position its entire life to sell well in the holiday. So I think it's really between Nintendo and Sony. I think Xbox is going to do better than it's been doing, but it's still going to be, you know, behind Sony and uh, Nintendo. Um, and obviously, maybe the PlayStation Classic ends up being the number one seller, who knows. But... Uh, I do think it's between those two companies. Uh, I think PlayStation's probably going to get a slight edge just because it's cheaper. And uh, it being cheaper and it having the library of games it does is probably going to mean it's going to sell better. But I think Switch is going to move, move better than last holiday. Last holiday, it moved between 7 and 8 million. I think it might hit 9 million this holiday uh, where PlayStation 4 hits about 10. So um, that's just my, my off-the-cuff prediction. Um, and who knows? Nintendo could easily take the lead. Because, again, they do have a nice one-two punch. I think if it was the new generation of Pokemon and Smash, then Nintendo would win for sure. But Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, I don't think it's going to sell as well. But we'll see. 
Um, next up comes, uh, next question comes from Wrath of Math. He says, Hey Nate, two questions for you. First, it seems to me that a large chunk of the YouTube personality community is taking Metroid Prime 4 in 2019 as a given. I wince every time I hear this. It reminds me of when everyone was saying, Yeah, Nintendo says Xenoblade is coming out this year. But it isn't. Except now it's in reverse. Have you noticed this? When do you think Metroid Prime 4 will and should come out? So, to answer your first question, uh, I don't think Metroid Prime 4 is coming out in 2019. I think it's a 2020 title. If you look at the lineup already for next year, it is packed. I see no reason for them to bring Metroid Prime 4 out then. Also, when they announced Metroid Prime 4, um, you know, a couple of E3s back, uh, I was under the impression, this is just the impression I got from interviews, that they had only, like, just started development. Like, that logo we saw was, like, the first thing they'd done. <laughs> so, um, I, that, to me, told me Metroid's three years out. So, three years from 2017 would be 2020. So, I fully expect it to be 2020. I, I think people just assume 2019 because it's a game we've known about since 2017, but I don't think it's coming. I think Bayonetta 3 has a much better chance of landing in 2019 than, than uh, Metroid Prime does. Uh, plus, there's already such a killer lineup. I mean, we're getting Animal Crossing next year. We're getting a new generation of Pokemon. We're getting Fire Emblem. That's three major system sellers in 2019. I don't know that Metroid is going to fit in there, but maybe it will. Um, only Nintendo really knows. Uh, and I understand, you know, getting... I don't know. I honestly don't know why the YouTube community thinks it's coming out in 2019. On the whole. Um, but... You know, everyone's got their opinions, I guess. Uh, and then his second question says, What was your experience with mathematics and math teachers throughout your education? Mostly positive, negative, in between? Um, I'd say mostly positive. Uh, I think the hardest thing for me with math teachers is that uh, through trigonometry and through um, pre-calculus, because I never took calculus, uh, through pure, like everything, ma math came easy to me. I was very good at math. I had straight A's in math all the way through high school, even doing pre-college courses. Um, but the thing is, I would always do it in my head. I was like a human calculator. So, I mean, I wasn't exactly like a human calculator, but, but it, like I would literally solve everything in my head. And the hardest thing was teachers want you to show your work so they know you're not cheating. So when I'm writing on the answers on a test and there's no work shown, they just assumed I was cheating on that test. And I'm like, I didn't cheat. So they'd have to like have me come in and retake the test after school to prove I wasn't cheating. So that was when I supposed to be like the hard thing is having teachers think I'm lying. Um, I remember in, uh, was it eighth grade or something? I was being told I wasn't smart enough to do the algebra class, which would have been a high school course, uh, that some kids were offered. So on the algebra final, um, I asked the, the math teacher, Hey, can I have the algebra final and, uh, the algebra book, um, the, the mathematics book you have and give me the weekend. And I want to turn in the test on Monday. And I want you to, to tell me what you said. I had a basketball tournament that weekend. So I was busy that weekend. So I basically only worked on the algebra test in the car ride to and from my tournament. Um, and when I turned in the test, I got a hundred percent on it. And first, I presumed I cheated. Then she talked to my parents and realized, oh, I didn't cheat. And no, I couldn't get credit for getting 100% on the final because I didn't actually take the class. And I'm just like, math just came that easy to me. So um, today, I'm not nearly as good today. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a tool of mine that is super rusty. It's something that I would need to practice and practice and practice. Um, I could probably get back to that, you know, that phase, especially with algebra and trigonometry. I was really good with that stuff. But um, you know, today I'm pretty rusty at it. I, by the time my kids get to it in school, I'm sure after refreshing myself, I'll be, I'll be fine and able to help them. No problem. Um, maybe not doing it all in my head anymore. I know I knew how to write things out. I didn't like writing out the problems because since I was always getting the right answer in my head, um, it just felt like a waste of time to write it down. Uh, another thing was I actually came up with an equation in algebra. I don't remember what it is. I have it written down in a notebook that answered almost every single algebraic formula that we did but i got it all simplified down to a brand new formula that never existed and the teacher kept getting mad at me when i used it because she's like uh this isn't what we're teaching you don't know that it's going to work 100 percent of the time I'm like you're right i don't know it's going to work 100 percent of the time but what i do know teacher is i have straight a's in this course and i've only used this formula for every problem <laughs> so <laughs> i don't uh i probably could have in another life i probably could have went on and become like a mathematician or something but just I, I didn't I, I loved math, but I didn't have like the love of math that I saw myself doing it uh, for a living kind of thing. But I was really good at math, which is probably why I started going down like the video game programming route at some point because there's a lot of math involved in programming, believe it or not. Um, all right, uh, next up we have uh, Sonic Ice 24 says, "Do you like Five Nights at Freddy's? And if so, which game is your favorite?" Um, I have played 
a single Five Nights at Freddy's games. It was on my phone. I don't remember which one. It was all right. Don't really have much to say about that franchise. Um, let me see. Uh, Mike Dude 324 says, Are you religious? If this is personal, don't worry about not answering. I understand. Now, we don't talk about religion and politics on the channel. Um, but that doesn't mean I'll shy away from what, like, what my religion is. I'm a Roman Catholic. I would not say I'm a practicing Roman Catholic. I do believe in God and Jesus, but uh, it's not something that I actively talk about much. It's too controversial. Um, I, I, my kids go to private Catholic schools, um, so I obviously believe in uh, instilling some of some of the, my religion and core values into them. But uh, you don't need religion to necessarily instill the core values, but um, it helps. I think it helps anyways. It helped me growing up, so I hope it helps them as well. Um... The next question comes from the MW Experience. It says, if you could pick any character to be in Smash, absolutely, regardless of likelihood, who would you pick? Conker. I always say Banjo Kazooie, but I'm going to go with Conker. Um, I don't think he'll ever be in Smash, but Conker from Conker's Bad Fur Day, that particular version of Conker. Taylor Bone says, who had more power, companies that make the console or third party developers? Third party developers. I hate saying that, but. There's always a new system that can come up. If Nintendo goes under, if Sony goes under, if Microsoft goes under, Google will make a system. Microsoft will come up with another system because they're not going to go under as a company. Um, you know, Amazon will come up with something. Reality is, as long as there's a demand to play games, there's going to be a platform to play games on. So as much power as console makers have because they own these audiences... If those console makers go away, as has been proven in the past, by the way, Atari went away, someone else replaced them. Sega went away, someone else replaced them. Like, console manufacturers can go away and they'll just be new ones. So, yeah, third-party developers have a lot of power, a lot more power than I think all of us are comfortable with admitting they have. Because their games, and games in general, is why we buy platforms to game on. So... Um, the last question we get then is from W. James MCI. He says, it's already Christmas yet? Not really. We haven't had Thanksgiving yet. In fact, he mentions, I suppose you have Thanksgiving to, first to worry about. Yes, Thanksgiving is the next holiday up and then Christmas. Although, everything gets kind of melded together this time of year anyways. Um, like, I honestly... It's hard for me to tell the difference between Thanksgiving and Christmas because on Thanksgiving, what happens? We get together as a family, we have a meal. What happens during Christmas? We get together as a family and have a meal. It's like the same thing, um, at least in terms of how we celebrate it. But, yeah, I, I think it's, um, you know, an interesting time of the year. Uh, I am not prepared for Christmas. I'm not ready for it. I'm not ready for the snow. I'm not ready for the presents. I'm not ready for... Um, dealing with my kids during this time. I'm not ready for any of it. I don't know. Last time I was ready for Christmas was probably when I was a kid. So, um, but you know, we get through it every year. Christmas is like my least favorite time of the year. Um, Thanksgiving, I don't mind. Halloween, I love. Christmas is just, especially now that I have kids, it's just, it, it's a hassle. It, it's more of a hassle than an enjoyment. And it kind of sucks because I mentioned earlier I'm a Roman Catholic, so technically Christmas is supposed to be about Jesus, but less and less every year it feels like it's about Jesus, thanks to how commercialized it is and all the family stuff. So, it is what it is. Anyways, I think that's going to do it for this new series, whatever I decide to call it. I don't know the name of it at the time of recording. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. We'll be back again hopefully next week, Saturday. I'm planning to release this every Saturday by whatever specific time period this ended up coming out. Uh, if you haven't entered yet, we have a Gleam.io link in the description for a Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Nintendo Switch giveaway. Uh, so you can go check that out. Uh, otherwise, hey, I'll just catch all of you guys in the next one.